This ladies conference will now be recorded. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for your state of your health message. This is the Health Detective Show with moderator Chris Whiting and contributor Roberto Parker of Innovative Sports Training. You can <clears throat> message or call in questions or simply listen. If you'd like to call in, call on your telephone to 646-749-3123. That's 646-749-3123. Now, here's your healthy <clears throat> show host, Roberto Parker. All right. Well, thank you, Chris. It's good to be here on the eve of the State of the Union. We're going to do the State of the Health message for tonight. And we're going to make this kind of an open forum where you can ask anything you want. If anybody calls in or messages in, they can ask anything they want regarding health. If I don't know the answer, I will certainly find the answer for you because that's what I'm here for. I am your health detective. Yes. This is exciting, Roberto. So, you know, typically we, we've... Uh... We've done this via a podcast. Now we're doing the uh, the the go to meeting. I'm excited to see you know what this offers us as far as different opportunities. Like I know you're going to do some slides tonight, which this is perfect for. Um, and it's also just exciting. Not only is this State of the Union time, but we're still sort of in that first part of the year. You know, right? Correct. Kind of on the tail end of all those um, New Year's resolutions that people set. I'm sure gyms are still very packed right now, but maybe starting to trail off a little bit as people are stepping away. So I, I think this is a great time to uh, to have a message all around being healthy. Correct. Right. You know, one thing I wanted to add, I'm surprised you're not playing uh, Hail to the Chief here or something for me. No. Or... <laughs> Holy cow. Did you watch the game, Roberto? Oh, yeah, that was an awesome game. Awesome game. That was that was a heck of a comeback with the Kansas City Chiefs. So, you know, we don't talk about this too often on here, but I and I don't want to embarrass you, but you used to work for the Chiefs. You were a strength and conditioning coach with them, correct? I was there for 1997 and 1998, Marty Schottenheimer's last two seasons as a head coach of the Kansas City Chiefs. Yes, that is correct. So you know what you know what kind of a grind professional football is. You know how hard folks have to work. Um, in, in pro football. So you probably have an even greater appreciation for what it takes, you know, physically, probably also mentally and emotionally to get through a long season like that. Um, you, you said it was a great game. What was it that you loved about that game? Well, you, you know, I love football and I love, I, I really like all the sports for that matter, because I think it teaches a lot of good life lessons. Mm -hmm. Now everybody is everybody's not blessed to be a great athlete necessarily, but um, by the way, I just got a text from your wife Jane. You might want to give her the proper link as well. She's trying to dial into the show here. Oh, okay, yeah, I'll forward this to her. Okay, but you know, football is a type of sport that that teaches a lot of life lessons. Not just football, but basketball. Because I, I was also a college strength coach for a lot of years too at the collegiate level. And actually, I kind of enjoyed that more because I got to work with more variety of athletes and personalities, track athletes, wrestlers, uh, football, basketball, uh, track and field, cross country, equestrian. So it was kind of cool because I got to work with young kids, 18 to 22 years of age and a, with a variety of personalities, because I can always each sport has kind of its own unique personality, you know, wrestlers. Football players, aquatics, swimmers, divers, they all have kind of their own unique personality and characteristic traits. You know what I mean? So yeah. it, was, it, was, it was kind of cool. Plus, there were amateur athletes who didn't make any money. Most of them did it for the love of the game, for the love of the sport, and they just wanted to be active, which was kind of cool. But mm -hmm. the thing I want to talk about, I'm glad you asked me that question, because training a performance athlete is way different than training for long-term health. When you're training for a sport, when you're training for a sport, especially a high performer sport like professional football or basketball, or even really high school and up for that matter, high school, college pros or, or the Olympics, you almost have to have a fanaticism about you and the way you train. And really, and really you have to overtrain in order to perform well in that sport. 
unlike training for life, you don't really want to overtrain your body because obviously most athletes are in their teen years and in their 20s and maybe 30s, in, unless you're a freak like Tom Brady, you know, in your <laughs> early 40s or in your early 40s. But at about that time is when you want to start dialing back and not overdoing it on just tearing your body up because exercise itself and we'll talk a little bit about that tonight exercise is another form of stress and if you're overdoing it once you get beyond a certain age there's going to there's going to be more deficit than increase in performance so you you got to be a little bit careful about that so so just because a certain athlete that you might read about is training six days a week doesn't mean that's going to be good for you well, and I, I think that's an interesting and a really important point that you bring up. I know you say often, or I've heard you say, exercise is overrated, activity is underrated. And so um, that's one of my big learnings from you, like exercise is good, but you got to be careful. And especially as you're getting a little, little bit older, like me, um, not overstressing yourself, but keeping an eye toward being active, right? Like even on days you're not exercising. Yeah. Yeah, you're absolutely right. I mean, you have to, uh, I'm texting somebody here. That they also see the link's not working. So sorry about that, ladies and gentlemen. I put in the wrong link address, I guess. Um, you know, activity is something that you can do every day. Exercise should be done only maybe two, maybe three, maybe four days a week. It, it depends on, it depends on the, on your goals, it depends on your personality, it depends on your motivation level, it depends on your metabolic makeup. I mean, it's not for everybody. Now, I personally, I work out three times a week right now, and that's about it. Maybe a fourth day of the week, I'll do some core work, but I don't really go balls to the wall like I used to. I mean, I used to do two hour workouts three, four times a week. But the oh problem was once I get once I got over 40, I was still trying to train like I was in my 20s. And I was always hurting myself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you have to really, you have to really uh, gauge what you're doing, find the right professional to work with, and go from there. Yeah, yeah. Well, just let me ask you this. You know, I mentioned earlier we're at the first of the year. People have New Year's resolutions. They want to get in shape. Um, you know, I think part of it is people want to feel better. I think. For a lot of people, vanity may be even a bigger part of it, like they want to look better. So um, maybe we start with this. If if somebody's wanting to get rid of that spare tire, you know, cut the stomach down, like what what do you do? You know, you, you think stomach, oh, sit-ups, that's what I should be doing. D does that work? Is that where you should be putting effort in if you want to get the tum-tum uh, to go down a little bit? 80% of losing the gut is in the kitchen, baby. It's what you put on your plate. That's where a lot of it begins. Now, I've said this before in previous shows we've done with Paul. You cannot really spot reduce. It is very, very hard to do. You can spot tone, but you cannot spot reduce. The best way to lose body fat and to get that visceral fat down, which is typically what accumulates around your stomach, your belly button area, you've got to cut down on the carbohydrates, cut down the sugars, Cut down on the on the pastas and the donuts and the sweets and that kind of stuff. Increase your water intake. Start doing some walking. Start doing uh, and, and start out slow if you haven't done anything in a long time. Start out slow. Start doing some walking. Start doing some light body weight type of uh, type of exercises that are challenging your muscles, and then gradually increase the intensity. But mm -hmm. don't overdo it. Don't. I wouldn't say do more. Don't do more than about. 30 to 40 minute exercise type of sessions, but you can walk every day. You can do swimming every day. You can maybe go out and play a light game of tennis every day, as long as you don't get too crazy with it, but be active every single day if you can. Now, in this part of the country where we live, that's kind of hard to do because, you know, it's 20 degrees outside, so it's not really the most conducive for, for going outdoors. So, mm -hmm. so that's, that's the best you can do. You know, I, it, it's it's good to hear that it's sobering to hear that i think for a lot of people uh, well i'll speak for myself i'm okay with exercising i actually kind of enjoy it it's that that part in the kitchen that takes more willpower 
from me. So I, I want to fully acknowledge, hey, it 80% is what you put into your body. Um, but let me ask you this, going back to the stomach, can sit-ups get me abs? Like, oh. let's say I am, I'm eating better. Are sit-ups going to get me the abs or that six pack that everybody seems to want? It can, yes, it can, but it has to be done in conjunction with doing the proper eating habits. You have to do both together. You cannot just say, yeah. like, you, 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 you cannot just say, I'm just going to do sit-ups and eat like crap and expect to get that six pack. Now, I'll admit there are some people who are blessed with good genetics. Genetics mm -hmm. does play a part in it. Yeah. But, you know, I've seen athletes that, hey, when I was strength coaching, I, I knew of athletes who would eat like crap, but man, they had beautiful bodies. Wow. But eventually, but eventually that will catch up with you. Because they, they were older. probably younger, right? When they had that. E exactly. They were younger. They go out and eat pizza. They go out and drink beer. I mean, you know, they get away with it. But as yeah. you start to get over the age of 30, that body slows down. You're less insulin sensitive and things just aren't going to process and metabolize as much as you want. Now, getting back to your question. Yes. Doing a lot of abdominal slash core work can get you that six pack. But it's got to be in conjunction with proper eating habits yeah boy the, and that like i said that's the sobering part of it let me ask you this uh, on the sort of the same subject when i was a kid it it was sit-ups okay guys we're going to do sit-ups in gym class or whatever you know do 50 sit-ups a day i hear crunches now more than sit are they the same thing are crunches and sit-ups the same exercise crunches are Crunches are more of a half sit up, to be honest with you, because there's a thing called time under tension. And with crunches, that's what you're doing. You're just loading the abs a little bit more because you're not letting the abdominals relax by going through a full range of motion and doing sit ups. But, you know, crunches, crunches are OK, but it's not it's not the end all be all. You got to do other stuff, too. You're like you got to do some core work. You got to do some planks. You got to, you know, I, I've had you guys in my class to swing sledgehammers around. There's yeah. a lot of different things that you have to do in order to in order to elicit some sort of change because if you do the same thing all the time the body becomes accustomed to that yeah and that that is truly one thing i love about um having class with you is when we do core stuff it's different all the time it's not just okay give me a hundred sit-ups which gets so boring um, yes exactly and it's probably not as effective just like you alluded to by doing different things to sort of shock the body, I guess, or surprise it. Right. Yeah. Okay. Um, going back to this, it's a new year. People have joined gyms. You know, people set resolutions all the time. What, what's your feeling in general on resolutions? Do you feel like they're effective? Are they good? Or, or what's your approach to that sort of thing? I think they're a waste of time. That's okay. My, that, that is my uh, blunt opinion of resolutions because most people don't even they stick to resolution for about one or two months you have to have concrete goals now not just a goal but you also have to prioritize how important is it in your life you also have to prioritize your activities and that that's what people don't do how much time are you willing to donate to exercise how much are you willing to change your eating habits how many how many grams of carbs, protein, fats are you putting into your system every day? You have to have activity goals and you have to prioritize how many meals a day do you want to eat? How many calories do you want to consume? You have to prioritize what you're doing in your life in order to accomplish it. You just can't say, all right, Chris, I'm going to lose 50 pounds this year. I don't know how the hell I'm going to do it, but I'm going to do it. Okay. I mean, yes. that's, that's, that's very vague. And I, and I challenge all people out there who have kids. If your kid came up to you today and told you, well, mom or dad, I'm going to get an A in mathematics or science or whatever. OK, how much study are you going to do? Well, I don't know, but I'm going to get an A somehow. OK, I mean, that's pretty vague. Yeah, you probably say, look, you have to buckle down. You have to set some goals, have some study time 
have some homework time. You have to donate so many hours a day for you to accomplish getting an A in math or science or biology, or whatever the case might be. You just can't say a vague statement, mom, dad, I'm going to get an A in such and such topic this year in school. So it sounds like you're saying a resolution is just like a declaration. I'm going to do this, but a goal is when you take it, break it down, come up with steps, you have a legitimate plan to to accomplish whatever it is you want to accomplish. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Okay, Chris, if you notice on the screen, it has put up the prescription for optimal health. I see that. Okay, now, this is my prescription for good optimal health. Now, okay. there's a lot of different ways of mixing and matching this relative to one's makeup, physical makeup, physical activity. Now, once again, that's a little bit different than exercise, correct? Correct. Physical activity. That's just moving every day, getting up, doing something. I also have what I call the the uh, the ten push up, ten push up, ten squats every thirty minutes a day. So let's your job. Let's say you're at your job. Every thirty minutes you get up, you do ten push ups, you do ten air squats. Or make oh God, I five. need to do that. Okay, I'll just make it. Let's say just make it five push ups and five air squats. It's not really hardcore exercise, but it's getting up and moving. So let's say yeah. you do that every every 30 minutes of the day, and let's say you make it 10. Okay, so that's so that's 20 repetitions every 30 minutes of the day for eight hours. That's pretty mm -hmm. good, wouldn't you say? Okay, so that that adds up to what about 80, uh, 160, something like that, 160 reps you're doing. Yeah, okay, so yeah, if my math's right. You'd be doing about 160 push-ups and 160 squats mm -hmm. that way. Okay, yeah. So yeah, I mean you're you're getting you're getting movement every single day. Oh, I like that. Yeah. Okay. Now, the next one is restful sleep. Now, this is one here that I've had more people tell me that they cannot get enough sleep. And I, and I think the reason is because they're stressed. You know, the, this thing called blue light, people spend so much time, people spend, people spend so much time in front of the computer, in front of the yeah. television, in front of their phones. And that blue light does affect your pineal gland in your brain, which also produces melatonin, which also helps to sleep, obviously. And also, women have a harder time as they get into near menopause, post menopause, for a lot of for a lot of estrogen reasons, and because they're not making as much estrogen, and therefore they have less meta melatonin. So women are a little bit more affected by this typically than than men are. But you've got to get that rest of sleep, and you really don't need to sleep eight hours necessarily to get complete rest of sleep. It's the quality of sleep that you're getting. It's that wow. rapid eye movement, that rapid eye movement, that, that REM. You could, you could get five hours of sleep, and if you're getting at least four hours of REM, that's pretty good. That's that's good rest of sleep. That okay, that's that's fascinating to focus more on the quality. So you said too much blue light, too much time on screen, so we can pull that back. What else can we do to to help lead to restful sleep? Well, well, getting back to eating again, that's important. Uh, if you're getting if you're consuming a lot of pro-inflammatory foods in your in your diet, that that will cause indigestion, obviously, and you can't sleep oh, yeah. at night. Um, it also affects melatonin because melatonin, 80% of melatonin is actually made in the small intestines of your gut. So, and what is the role of the small intestines? To digest food. That's the main purpose of the small intestines, right? And so mm -hmm. when, when that digestive process isn't qualitative like it should be, that also affects melatonin tonin production and when that melatonin production isn't right you're not going to sleep very well so what what's your opinion on melatonin as a supplement i'm not opposed to it i you know i'm i've taken melatonin before it doesn't really help me personally but it's like anything else if you're taking melatonin but you're spending eight hours a day in front of a screen and you're eating like crap and you're not being active and you're not exercising enough because he at being at being active can also help you sleep at night also okay so that's important because you're developing those endorphins and all all that stuff kind of feeds together it helps to 
helps to stimulate melatonin production, all those those good endorphins in your body. And also in the next one, the healthy uh, uh, healthy sun exposure. I kind of skipped exercise here, but healthy sun exposure also is is good for your sleep habits as well. Oh wow! So all that all that stuff ties in together. Now with healthy sun exposure, some people are kind of afraid of that because of cancer. But it's the time right. of the day that you that you have to do it, and you have to become accustomed to it. Now, if and the thing about healthy sun exposure, and I just read an article today about this. If you if your body is is your body if your body is plentiful with plenty of selenium, there's less chances of becoming uh, of the sun being a danger to you in terms of developing cancer from UV rays. Selenium. And, and really. So, yeah, yes, absolutely. But it's the time of the day that's important. And the time of the day is right in the middle of the day. That's when the sun's rays are the least intense or the least lethal. So when the sun is straight overhead, that's the best time to be out? That's, now, that's also the warmest time of the day. Yeah. It's also, it's also the time when the UV rays are not as intense. And then I guess that gets your vitamin D for you, too, or can if you've got enough skin exposed. Okay. Hey, vitamin D, the best source of vitamin D is, is sunlight, baby. It is sunlight. Okay. See, that's tough as a, as a light-skinned person who's been um, told by doctors, wear sunscreen all the time. Um, but then my, my chiropractor said, you need to get out in sun for a little bit, even if it's like 10 minutes. Absolutely. Now, with here's, skin the thing about, here's, the thing about light, but here's the thing about light-skinned people. Light-skinned people absorb vitamin D more, not, I shouldn't say more efficiently, but at a faster rate than dark skin people. Interesting. Yes, they do. For, for a dark skin person such as myself, I would need to spend probably at least a half hour to 45 minutes in the sun to get the full, the full monte of, of, of vitamin D, whereas you You'd probably do it in 15 to 20 minutes. Yeah, pasty guy like me, I'm out there 15 yeah. minutes, I'm good to go. Okay. Yeah, man. <laughs> um, <laughs> that's me, you know me. Um, yeah. Okay, exercise. Uh, yes, yes. Okay, anything you want to ask me about that? Well, so we talked about it a little bit before, and I think maybe the differentiator here, physical activity is movement, you're not necessarily breaking a sweat. You might if if you're you know walking and it's warm outside. Exercise, it's the intensity is amped up, right? That's what makes it exercise. Like you are causing yes. stress to your muscles. And exercise, there's more of a metric component to it. How many reps? How many sets? The tempo, the uh, the velocity. How many days a week are you doing this? So it's a little bit more structured than just activity. Activity is just going out. You might go in the backyard and play volleyball with your kids for a half hour a day or yeah. walk the dog or, or you know, go out and walk around that block a few times with the neighbors. You don't really have a set how many reps, how many sets I'm going to do, how hard I'm going to go at it. You're just kind of socializing and having a good time and developing relationships that you do. Whereas act activities such as exercise is a little bit more focused, a little bit more intense, a little bit more of an ass kicker. You know, and and uh, let me just throw this out. This is just m me, personal, Chris. Exercise I have found for me, and there are probably some people like this as well. I am not intrinsically motivated to do exercise. Like a lot of times if I go to the gym by myself, it's going to be more on the activity side. Um, extrinsic, you know, motivation that comes outside of me, I will work harder. And that's where it's great to have a trainer like you to help me with that exercise portion of it. Correct. Yeah. Well, you know what? You're like probably 90% of the people out there, man. They're not, they're not uh, extrinsically motivated or intrinsically motivated. Intrins yeah, yeah, exactly. And I think, I think it's just a key to know yourself, to be aware of what motivates you, what works for you. And right. I have found that I, I need, when it comes to doing an ass kicker exercise, I need somebody besides me kicking my ass to make it happen. So right. thanks for kicking my ass, Roberto. <laughs> well, like I said, exercise is something that, you know, many people are turned off by it, unfortunately. 
Mm -hmm. uh, it, it depends. Like the type of trainer I am, you know me. I mean, I'm more, I'm more of an ass kicker. I mean, that's that's how I like to train. That's my background in strength coaching, being an athlete myself. Whereas you go to another trainer, it might be a little bit more social. It might be a little bit more funsy onesy, you might say. <laughs> And uh, you know what? But you know what, Chris? That's that's okay for some people. That that's okay. But if you're really more of a a competitive type of individual, a more of a focused type of individual, you just want to get in there. You want to get your butt kicked, get your workout on, and get out. I'm the person for you right there in that category. I'm not yeah. really the guy that's that's going to hold your hand. I'll be honest with you. Um, I'm more of the type that's going to, let's get this done. Let's get a sweat on. Let's get out of here. Yep. Yeah. You, you don't necessarily fall into the funsy onesie category, as you put it, um, which is fine for people that, that need that need more support. But yeah, if you want somebody to direct you in what to do and to kick your ass and to push you to work harder than you thought you could. You're you're the guy for that. Yeah, you know those trainers out there who specialize in prenatal, uh, postnatal workouts for for pregnant women. There are uh -huh. trainers who specialize in working just with, uh, you know, just with uh, little kids. There are trainers mm -hmm. who specialize in work, who, who specialize in sports performance, which I do myself. And yep. you know, my my strength coaching background. There there are trainers out there who specialize just working with the geriatric uh, community. Uh, the you know the elderly community so you know you have trainers in all different perspectives now I also do a lot of work with as you know with doing lab work assessments and tying in the way you should be eating yep. relative to the results on your on consistent lab work on your blood sugar your high uh, your uh, your blood pressure your cholesterol readings your thyroid readings and I look at those things and I tie in a prescription of how you should be eating relative to what I see in your lab work on a consistent basis and also tying in activity and exercise. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And I, I like that holistic approach for sure. Um, and, and speaking of holistic, this next bullet's interesting. Clean drinking water. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so I that, guess that's, uh, I mean, hey, look, if there's one thing that we probably don't get enough of, honestly, is, is that, I mean, there is a website, and man, and now it slips my mind. I think it's called, uh, I think it's called uh, something watersprings.com or something like that. I'll have to look and search it because what that, that website is, you can probably even plug into a search engine, it will tie you into every, every spring water area located in the country. Oh, wow. And there's one here in Missouri, and it's down there by Roaring River. I'm sure you've heard of that. I have. Okay, there's a there's a spring down there that's a natural with natural spring water. But this particular website that I found will direct you to every natural spring in the United States of America. Now there aren't too many of them left because you know our country is becoming more populated, but it'll it'll plug into that. That's the best water to drink. Now, unfortunately, we don't have time always to find travel for miles and miles to get uh, fresh spring water. So you have to kind of rely on going to a health food store or something to you read the label as to the or origin of where the water came from. What, so what about like filtered water, ionized water? Where do you come down on that? Uh, you know, that's what I use. I, I get filtered water. I mean, if, if okay. I can, if I can get, uh, you know, just water up the shelf that way too, or some good spring water do that. But I'm sure I'm like everybody else. I've got a, a busy lifestyle, so I've got to kind of rely on what I read on the label. Wow. So, okay. And then this last one, I, I think is kind of related fresh air. Absolutely. Now that's... <laughs> That's an uh, that's a tough one also, especially if you live in a heavily populated urban area where there's a lot of uh, toxins in the air. Uh, a place like I lived in Los Angeles for two years, and there's a lot of smog out there. You know, here in Kansas City we have a little bit of smog too, nothing like like L.A., but yeah, know, 
that that's kind of hard to find too now and another thing is sometimes the air in your home is less clean than the air outside because of furniture in your home to give off toxins carpeting clothing items <laughs> sometimes somebody just sneezed there didn't they? somebody sneezed do we have collars on here i think yeah. we do uh, okay. this is Kopi. And he would show up as though he'd been there. I'm sorry? This is Kopi on the line. Okay. Do you have a question, sir? Uh, no, I'm just listening. I'm just listening to all this information right now. Okay, oh. well, good, good. Well, uh, welcome. Kobe, is it is hey. Kobe or Kofi? Kofi, K-O-F-I. Okay, okay, good. It's good well, to have welcome you to the show. show. Glad to have you here. Hey, I'm, I'm excited to be here. Okay, good. Anyway, uh, getting back to fresh air, uh, Chris, yeah, you can put air purifiers in your home. Uh, things like carpeting you have to be careful of. That's why if you notice a lot of a lot of homes today are going towards hardwood floors. Mm -hmm. it's, it's healthier. It doesn't give off all the, all the crap and all the toxins. And one of these days, I'm going to get a hardwood floor myself, actually. But hardwood flooring is, is a better... Uh, a better way to go instead of carpeting because carpetings actually give off a lot of toxins because they're made with chemicals. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, it, they smell like formaldehyde the moment you put carpet in your house. That, that can't be great for you, I wouldn't right. think. Yeah. But right. you're right. You do see houses trending toward hardwood or tile floors right. um, as ceramic opposed to tile. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Wall to wall carpeting everywhere yeah, ceramic, ceramic tile now another thing i didn't put on there but you hear a lot about glyphosates okay. glyphosates uh such as roundup uh -huh. you know costco has stopped selling roundup because of the toxic nature of of roundup it, because it produces glyphosates now glyphosates Glyphosates are toxic because they have the same type of effect on your body, believe it or not, that 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 uh, that gluten does. It uh, it can really jack with your immune system, pretty much, is what it does. So it has a lot of uh, bad effects. So I would try to stay away from things like herbicides, uh, pesticides, if you can. Now, that's another reason you want to try to buy organic foods if you can. I know it gets a little bit costly. And if you don't go the organic route with, let's say, produce, wash it off. You know, they have vegetable washes, produce washes. You know, you can buy special for, for fruits and, and vegetables. Okay. Yeah. I, I Boy, that, I think that is so key because you don't know what's on the outside of your vegetables. You want to make sure you wash them before you eat them. That, that's a huge deal. Right. Yeah. Um, you know, I know um, we 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 talk a lot in this show about what what you can do. It's all great information that people can use right away. Um, but what if people want to work with you? Now you're located right here in the middle of the country where the Kansas City Chiefs <laughs> play and win Super Bowls. That's what we do. Um, <laughs> If, yeah. if people want to work with you, you know, I, I get trained by you because I live closely, but, but you do more than just that, right? Right. Well, you know, here's what I offer. I offer lifestyle assessments. Now, getting back to the holistic phrase you used earlier in the uh, podcast here tonight, I dive deep into what is going on with you. You know, Here's the thing about stress. There's three forms of stress. There's chemical stress, there's emotional stress, and there's physical stress. Those are the only forms of stress we as human beings have. Now, it's how we manage those stresses that determine how good our health is or how bad our health is. And by the way, chemical stress is nutritional stress as well because when you eat food, that's a biochemical reaction in your body. So that's part of the, the chemistry. And so what happens is when diseases occur, symptoms occur, that typically is the result of some form of stress, cancer, form of stress, diabetes, mm -hmm. form of stress, obesity, form of stress, 
thyroid issues, form of stress. Even Alzheimer's and Parkinson's typically are forms of stress. In fact, Alzheimer's is considered type 3 diabetes. So what? Yes. I've, after, I've never heard that before. Yes. Alzheimer's is considered, if you listen to many holistic people, professionals, it is considered type 3 diabetes in that your body, your brain is, is not using uh, glycogen like it should, glucose. So anyway, but those are all forms of some sort of stress going on in your body. And how do you, how do you eliminate the symptom and possibly the disease? You have to pinpoint, peel away the layers and find out exactly what is stressing you out. Wow. It could, be, it could be one little thing like not getting enough sleep. It could be another little thing like maybe eating the wrong type of foods that's causing some sort of cascade of of allergies in your system or of sensitivities because if you're not if you're not digesting your food right there's a thing called leaky gut and leaky gut Ew. leads to leaky gut leads to autoimmune disorders autoimmune disorders leads to things like alzheimer's parkinson's possibly cancer because oh like i said man we I, you know this from our past uh, work together when the gut goes Man, everything just shuts down. Well, you, so, you say it all the time. You get healthy from the belly button out. Absolutely. So those lifestyle assessments that I do, and sometimes it might take weeks, months. It might take a couple of years to find out exactly what is going on with you because we got to peel away the layers. Now, the second one is athletic sports performance. I work with athletes improving their athletic performance improve your speed, improve your strength, improve your flexibility, your mobility. And the last one is online training and some kind of consultation. Now, it doesn't have to be online necessarily, because obviously you live local here and I can meet with you one-on-one -on -one in person, but I have people that I work with on the internet, just like we're talking right now, we get on the internet, we talk, we go over a program, I send them a video program, I go over their, their lab work. I go over some personal lifestyle assessment type of evaluative questions. And we just go from there. And we see what is going on with you. We try to pinpoint your strengths and pinpoint your weaknesses and try to minimize those weaknesses and maximize your strengths. You may not start that day because if you show the So, oh, wow, we got, we got people listening um, and yeah. also talking. So if I'm hearing you correct, just because you don't live right here in the Midwest in the Kansas City area doesn't mean that someone can't work with you and can't benefit from your knowledge and your understanding thanks to technology. You can work with anybody, anywhere. Anywhere, anytime, any way you want to do it. Okay, man, that's great. Um, hey, great, great show. As always, Roberto, very informative, insightful. You obviously have a lot of passion around health and wellness it comes through your knowledge comes through any any uh parting shots today before we close up this edition yeah i want to apologize to everybody out there uh, i guess i typed in the wrong link on the text message that i sent out but uh this is our first time doing this uh trust me i'm not a technologically uh oriented type of person certainly not a not a producer <laughs> But uh, I'll get better at doing this stuff. So, and if you need any help with anything, any questions, call me at 816-405-7703. You can see my uh, uh, email on the uh, splash page there, rwpsports at yahoo.com. Chris, you've done a fantastic job. I appreciate you helping me out with this. And I'd like to do these about once a month if we can. So yeah. stay tuned, everybody. And I'll send out more information regarding uh, future uh, future podcast shows we can do, health detective shows. Oh, that's perfect. Hey, seriously, thank you, Roberto. Thanks, everybody, for listening. This has been the Health Detective Podcast. Um, certainly, you know, email call if you want to work with Roberto. If, if you have ideas for future shows, send us that to the email, too. And yes. uh, like yes, Roberto said, we'll, we'll do these about once a month. I uh, hope to help a lot of people out there and look forward to talking to you again in a few weeks here. All right. Take care. God bless. All right. God bless, everyone.